Hey guys, today we are going to start a new book and it's called A Wolf Called Wander. Um, the author is Roseanne Perry and this book is, um, the reason we're reading it, one of the reasons, is because it's our Eamon Carter book this year. And so Eamon Carter is going to look a little bit different this year. We're not actually going to go to the museum this year. We're actually going to have a virtual field trip. And so a lot of the things that we learn about at the museum are going to be related to this book. Um, so A Wolf Called Wonder. Um, before we read the story, there's some things that I want us to kind of think about. Um, I don't know how much you know about wolves, but I want you to think about what you do know about wolves. And I want you to write some things in your reading journal things, anything that you know about wolves. Okay. Number two says, what are some ways that animals are built to adapt to their surroundings? Think about how some animals are able to survive in extreme heat or extreme cold weather. So think about that question and then write down your thoughts there. Number three says, have you ever been lost even for a little bit? And how did it make you feel? So think about that. Write your thoughts there. Number four says, what is your name? And what does your name mean to you? Number five, when working on a project, do you think it is easier to work alone or with a group and why? And the last question says, how can humans better help wildlife and nature? Okay. So these are some probably uh, some issues or some topics that are going to be brought up in the book. And so I think it's good to think about, you know, kind of some things before we read um, what you're what's going through your mind when you read those questions. OK, so again, this is called A Wolf Called Wonder. I'll try to straighten that up a little bit. Here we go. So whenever I read a novel, I, I like to read the inside cover because it's going to give me a little bit of a, you know, an intro to the book or whatever, a little synopsis. So it says, I have a brother, sharp, bigger than me, and all growl. I have sisters, pounce, who loves to wrestle, and wag, who wags with her tail. And best of all, my brother, warm, who likes to curl up under my chin, the only pup that is smaller than me. Swift. A wild wolf cub lives with his pack in the mountains. When a rival pack attacks, Swift and his family scatter, and Swift sets out on an incredible journey through dense forest into barren wilderness and across flowing water. The trip is dangerous and full of peril, and Swift encounters fire, hunger, hunters, and highways as he wanders. Will Swift find the courage to survive? Will he ever find a place to call home? A Wolf Called Wonder is based on the extraordinary true story of a wolf named OR7 and often called Journey. A wild wolf, wolf who traveled re a remarkable 1,000 miles across the Pacific Northwest. So yes, this story is based on a true story of a wolf named OR7 who people often called him Journey. Um, so I think this is going to be a really good book. Um, so if you look at the table of contents, we have different um, words that are titled. It doesn't say chapter one, chapter two, or whatever. The first chapter is called pack. The second is watch. And the third is rival. So let's see how far we can get today. <coughs> I begin in darkness, and my nose tells me everything I know. I have a brother, sharp, bigger than me, and all growl. I have sisters, pounce who loves to wrestle, and wag who talks with their tail. And best of all, my brother warm, who likes to curl up under my chin, the only pup smaller than me. So as you can tell, he has several brothers and sisters. And I think as we're reading this, it might be a good idea to even have your journal out and maybe write down some of these names so that we can kind of track these characters 
as we learn more about them, we can grow our ideas about the characters. So, you know, in your journal, you might write down their names and then anything that we can, um, that we learn about that character as we go, that might be a really good idea to, to kind of think about. Okay. I know, I knows each one of them in the damp dirt above and the dry grass below. I circle the den while the others drowse. I take test runs up the tunnel. They call me swift because I was the first to stand up and walk. Wherever my legs take me, <clears throat> I always circle back to the empty hollow spot in the center of the den that smells like home. Like the thing I can never smell enough. And then comes out of the wind the best of all smells. Mother. She turns around once, nose touching each of us in turn, and then lies down in her hollow. Sharp, pounce, and wag die for her belly to drink. I could have been first, but mother's fur is full of smells, from her hip to her shoulder to her warm, growly breath. She holds smells with no name, smells that make me want to push beyond the place at the mouth of the tunnel where mother has said, do not pass, but my nose where the light comes from. <coughs> I am late for lunch. Warm creeps toward the last drinking spot. I lunge for it, and then, ah, oh, drinking fast and strong, drinking gulps and dribbles and gasps. Mother sings to us as we drink about the wide world beyond our den and the story of our life in the mountains. I take in her song like air, like milk, pack, mountains, elk, stars, wind, rain, how hunt mountains pack as always warm squirms under me in his lower to the ground way he whimpers and pushes his head under my chin pop my drinking spot is gone belly half full i move on i do not even try sharp he is big and there is a bite beyond or behind all that loud mouth yowling i nudge pounce but she steps on my head Wag gives up her drinking spot when I push her away. Wag pushes Pounce, who pushes Sharp, and then he turns to Warm, teeth bared, and growls the one word we all know, mine. Warm creeps away and curls up in the back of the den alone. One by one, we slide full-bellied in, into dreams. Before I do, I catch a sweet smell that gives me no peace. I yawn. I lift my nose, and yes, yes, there is more milk, and I can claim it. More, and if I drink it, I will grow to be even bigger than sharp. I can find just one swallow in every drinking spot, and now I know one thing. <coughs> my brothers and sisters do not. Hind milk is the sweetest of all. I lick the last drops from my chin, and I curl my body around, around warm so they will not step on him in the dark. Tell me again, I say to mother. I point my nose to the tunnel. When can I go outside? It's wild and hungry out there on the home ground, mother says, and you are tender and tasty, my wolfling, my own. Wait until you are bigger. She sighs at the soft pool of light that has spilled through the do not pass onto the den floor. Wait until you have a fighting chance. I stretch my nose toward the light and stifle the yawn that comes with the stretch. I don't want to wait. My sisters and brothers breathe the slow, deep breaths of sleep. My head bobs, but I fight. Tell me more. The pack belongs to the mountains, and the mountains belong to the pack, she begins, and the wolf star shines on us all. I listen, but the long and winding slide into dreams carries me away. And so I sleep and wake and eat and sleep until the time when I wake and mother is gone. A cool white glow shines in from the do not pass. 
I check on all the five smells of us and the dirt and the dry grass and the echo of mother's smell in her hollow. Everything is here. Everything is right. Except my empty belly. I feel the way of its side to side as I pace the den floor. There is less room now. No new smells to smell. Only longer bodies to trip over. And sharp is still the biggest of us all. Mother has never left us so long. Warm whimpers and rubs his head along my shoulders. The pack belongs to the mountains. The mountains belong to the pack, Wag says. So I'm noticing this is a repeating line that keeps coming over and over. I've said it now probably three times. So that that's something to kind of take notice of. Let's think about what this really means. The pack belongs to the mountains and the mountains belong to the pack. Wag says, and the wolf star shines on all of us, Warm chimes in. They go on, the two of them telling each other the story. Sharp pretends not to care that Mother is gone, but he puts his teeth on Pounce just in case she might taste good. She wrestle stomps him to the ground. I take my nose to the do not pass to learn what a pup can know. Warm shivers at the dare I am taking. I don't care. I am only paw length over the line. Two paws over. Three. Three paws over the line and I can smell new things. The dark den of the sky has a soft white circle that glows. Smaller white sparks flicker all around it. So many of them. More than tails, more than paws, more than even claws, paws, and tails together. I cannot stop watching them. The cool air carries news of faraway things I have only heard about in stories. Pine, mouse, owl, fur, huckleberry, water. There is more in the air than I can name. So it sounds like these wolflings have been in their den all this time mother has said do not go to the do not pass mark so he has stepped out a little bit farther than that and he's smelling all of these new things i inch forward against worm's nudge of warming do not pass crouch freeze it is a new wolf sniff freeze it is not a mother smell sniff Wag, freeze. I've smelled him on mother's, smir- mother's fur. He is kin. And I creep forward. Do not pass. Warm is long gone to the back of the den, but I can't keep the wag out of my tail. It thwops on the den floor and rains down dirt. Hush. Nose to the ground. I do not mean to bow down. His voice pulls me down. Okay, so here's a picture. Listen, he says. Do not, not so harsh this time. My ears turn. The wind brings sound along with smell. Whoosh, creak, pop from the wind in the trees nearby. Hoot and scurry from farther off. And then howl. Howl! My fur goes up all over. It is a sound from my dreams. I feel an answering howl deep inside, but not so deep that the pup watcher can't see it about to come out. Hush, he says. Hush. I swallow my howl, and I sit on my wag, and I wait. Hunger forgotten, in the wash of new sounds, the pup watcher waits too. He paces slowly, a gray shape in a circle of trees. I hear water running far away buzz and chirp chirp from nearby the heartbeat sound of running feet across or from medium far and then nearer and nearer still and now i can smell them mother and our kin sharp wag and pounce are all at my heels now they crowd in beside me stepping over warm and making hungry whimpers And then Mother comes over the ridge, running with the pack all around her. Mother! She is silver gray and tall with black ears and a black tail tip. Her kin rubs shoulders with her. 
they bow their heads and sing her name. I can smell her sweet, wild, milk wind smell. Come, she says. I am all wag. Outside? I want to be sure. Come, she says. Come out. I spring up, but sharp shoulders past me, and pounce steps on my hind leg, or my hind end. I roll her off, and we burst out with the den together, raining dirt on wagon warm behind us. I am out. The bigness of it. The new den with black with a black roof no jump could reach. I jump away just to try. Wind runs through my fur. My kin knows me from head to tail. I breathe in each one of them. Golden furred song, the hunter, and the pup watcher, growl, who walks slowly and with a limp. I could not stop the wag. I lift or lick the ground of our gathering place. Salt, iron, ash, home. Father stands above the rest, gray-faced, black ears, and tall, tall, tall. His scent mark on, is on the doorway of our den. His is the how the pack follows. I know I should go to him and share smells, but he is silent and tall. Sharp beats me to it. He brushes past. He is a head taller than me, and he looks down on me just to show that he can. His tail is up as always, but it goes down when he gets closer to father. He ducks his head and slows to a creep. Father gives him two sniffs and a growl and nudges him away. Sharp turns to the rest of us. Teeth. So you, you can see in the picture, they're coming out. And here's probably father. Teeth snapping. A growl in his throat, warning us that he is the one to smell. Share with father, not us. Warm cries a little. Wag says nothing, but the hopeful lift of her tail droops. Pounce takes the bait and wrestles sharp to the ground, losing twice before she pins him. I slip by them all and go to meet my father, tail, tall-tailed, and nose up. But as I get close, my tail drops like a stone. I almost turn back to bring warm along for courage. But something, some things a pup has to do on his own. Up close, father is not just gray and black, but golden on the chest and silvered over the shoulders. Dark red runs around his mouth. Son, he growls to me. Mine. I sit on my wag, but it is not hold still. But it will not hold still. I breathe in the smell of him, deeper and longer, until his scent holds a spot in my memory, right next to mother. I will do anything for him. I jump, spin, hoping he will like it. I yip and wag. Father, mine! I cannot stop smelling the red on him. It makes me hungry like the smell of mother's milk, but this is a new smell, a richer smell. I can't resist it. I nose his chin. I lick his face. He leans toward me and opens his mouth wide. A great red and runny lump comes out of his mouth. Ugh. It streams or it steams. It's nothing I have ever smelled before, but father gave it to me. Sniff, sniff. The more I smell it, the more I like it. I push my nose into the pile and I rub it into my fur. Mother calls the other pups and lowers her mouth to their liking, to their licking. She pushes another red lump of something out of her, out of her mouth. <coughs> she nudges Wag and pounces to try it. Aunt Song does the name for sharp and warm. I turn back to father's gift. Lick, lick, lick. It tastes smooth and rich. Not so sweet as milk, but tail wagging and good all the same. Nibble, nibble. The lumps are thick and chewy. Bite, bite, gobble, 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 gulp. Ah. The rest of the pups join in. Hind ends all a wag. 
I eat until I am dizzy full, and I curl up in my father's shadow as sleep stalks me. Father noses me into place, to a place at his feet. Elk, he says, life of the pack. So, what do we think that means? Elk, he says, life of the pack. Do you think that the wolf father may have had some of the elk in his mouth and he gave it to um, his wolf, Swift? So, anyway, that's something to think about. So, that was the end of chapter one. We'll come back and we'll read chapter two here in just a little bit.